Welcome. Now, we're looking at hardening um, for CIS and DISA. And in this module, what we'll take a look at is, what do you do when hardening for CIS DISA STIG, the actual STIG or the benchmark is not available? What process or steps should you follow when that circumstance occurs? Now, what type of IT assets do not have a CIS or a DISA STIG? So normally, CIS and DISA um, have the essential infrastructure STIGs or benchmarks. CIS is smaller, DISA is much bigger, and it has much broader coverage. So you're likely to find uh, the STIG or the benchmark. You're likely to find the STIG in, in DISA, slightly less likely in uh, CIS. But there's a 75% chance that you'll actually find it. Now, there's also another case where um, you're using a very old version, and then you would need to go to the archive section of CIS or DISA, because those archives and very old versions sometimes are maintained separately. Okay, so what type of IT assets do not typically have a CIS or DISA stake? Software applications are not there, like ASP.NET, PHP, but general software guidelines are there in DISA. And other applications which are not commonly used because of security issues, or um, sometimes open source tools like asterisk deployments, they don't have the stake available or the benchmark available. Now, this is a look at the, at the uh, graphic which shows the eight step uh, security hard, you know, uh, control implementation methodology or hardening methodology. Identify the critical assets, one. Number two, research on the applicable security controls. So that was step number two. Now, even when there is a CIS or DISA stick available, we were still doing the research just to get a feel and look and make sure we're not missing anything and, and to get our bearings correct. We were always doing step number two in the flow, in the eight step methodology for security hardening. Now, Step number three was making the checklist. Step number four was making the SOP. So step two was research. Now, because we didn't find a CIS or, or, or DISA STIG benchmark, you, you would now need to do the real research because we didn't find a STIG. So you look up Google, a primary mechanism. I use it all the time. Whenever I'm looking for security controls, which I didn't find in CIS or DISA, I always start off with Google. And you look for case studies, you look for white papers, you look for other instances where people have done this before, and you look for guidelines, and you'll find a lot of information on Google. Um, despite having IT infrastructure item or an IT asset, which is not very commonly used in the industry, and hence the likelihood of its STIG or benchmark being available with CIS or DISA being low, despite that, um, and you know, uh, if you face the eventuality where, you're, where a CIS or DISA benchmark or STIG is not available and you have to do the research, you'll find a lot of information on how to do the security implementation on the web. And that's where you should look. And other considerations. Implement, uh, when you, you know, follow the same process. In step number two, you do the research. Step number three, make the checklist. And then eventually, you have to implement this on the test setup. And here, the risk is slightly high because you haven't, uh, followed a conventional approach, you, a DISA or CIS TIG, you're, you're, you've researched the controls and made your own set of controls, um, your custom controls. So in testing, you have to be more careful uh, in the pilot configuration. Implement on test setup, do some real good testing. Um, security testing tools could be used, which are available, and a lot of tools are available, a lot of open source tools are available and out there. Perform third-party security testing, like, like penetration testing from a certified ethical hacker, for example. Uh, and vendor best practices for application security hardening sometimes are also available. Vendors have their own guidelines on how to implement security tools on their application. And uh, this is another look. So, you know, you go through the entire workflow exactly in the same way. Only um, step number two is different because, you know, you have to do the research yourself and make your custom checklist and custom controls yourself, and hence you have to do some more testing. And um, here, I would like to mention that with some practice, it becomes easier and easier to develop your own custom controls where you haven't been able to find stakes. Um, with efforts and by following the eight-step methodology, all types of security assets, um, all types of assets can be hardened, and you can develop your custom security controls. And when you test them and implement them, this will give you a lot of confidence also. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.